Hey, hey, welcome to the Lifestyle Creation Podcast, designing life on your terms. I'm your host, Jamie Thurber, and I'm an expert operations manager, productivity queen, mindset, business, and lifestyle coach. Basically, getting shit done is my jam. And I believe in the power of intentional living and in real conversations that can shift your perspective, create habits, and ultimately achieve the freedom that you want in every area of your life. What is up, guys? Welcome back to the podcast. This is Jamie Thurber, your host here, and we're just going to dive right in. So I was thinking about different ways to incorporate different things into the podcast that you guys can put into motion straight away. I do my best in that each episode to give you some takeaways and stuff you can either, you know, a lot of times it's a lot of perspective shifts, right? But I think also the important thing to think about is that I want you to have stuff you can use. And so this is going to be potentially a little bit more skilly. Is that a word? No, it's not a word, but you'll see what I mean. So I wanted to talk about the infamous social media. Dun, dun, dun. And there's a few things I want to say about it. It's funny because I'm sure you've all seen this a time or two. Maybe you've done it a time or two. No judgment here. But people complain about social media on social media, (laughs) which is entertaining, (laughs) to say the least, but whatever. So (laughs) I think that it gets a bad rap. And here's what I have to say about that. I think that we could put a bad spin on basically everything that happens that we use every day, like everything from cars to, I mean, shit, people could even put a bad rap on walking, Because what if you lived in like a city and you're breathing smoggy air or you're, you know, have a heart condition? Who knows, right? Like we could put a bad spin on almost anything people could, right? Um, But I wanted to just talk about like, sure, you know, there's been plenty of, there's a lot of things about why social media was designed um, that is real, right? Um, The way that it works with algorithms and marketing. But the truth of the matter is, is like we've been being manipulated by marketing since there was no internet, no TV, no billboards. Like, you know, the the manipulation of marketing began in print ads. Um, It began in people speaking about, you know, the expectation you were going to get or, or, you know, giving you false expectations of a product at a general store. You know what I'm saying? So like, it's always been there. We've always had this manipulation um, of marketing and it's just gotten worse over the years, right? And this is not what this conversation's about, but I'm just, we'll, we'll get to the point here in a second. But I just wanted to lay that out there and just kind of give you, um, maybe just, you know, offer you a bit of a, of a, an ease or a permission slip to quit. Don't jump on the bandwagon that social media is a bad thing. Um, and it's this horrible thing and blah, blah, blah. Not if you're smart, (laughs) not if you're smart about it, right? Not if you choose to utilize it as a tool, not if you choose to utilize it as something that um, connects you to people. You don't have to be a business owner or a brand to see the value. I mean, during COVID, right, when we were all in lockdown, having social media connected the whole wide world. I don't know if you remember, you know, those first few weeks of the world literally being on lockdown, there were people from all over different countries in Europe and India and America and like all of these places that were singing together and sharing music and inspirational moments everywhere on their balconies. Like it was something that connected us. And I think we are really quick as humans sometimes, not as us individually, but it's like the rest of it's all the noise, right? The noise is so quick to bring us to a place that tells you that it's not that it's bad and brings you away from the fact that it is something that can actually be really beautiful if used properly. Right. So I want to just say like you, same thing with everything in your life, you get out of it what you want to get out of it. So you can use it as a place that gives you anxiety. You you know, what I seen mean by that is there are certain ways and certain behaviors that you could decrease that would decrease the anxiety that social media gives you or the stress or the annoyance or the whatever, right? Like there's things like this unfollow button. There's things like unfriending. There's things like snoozing people. There's things like muting their stories. There's things like, 
these options to where you get to control what you see and what you don't see. It is definitely in your hands if you want to take that responsibility. But I think that it's important to think of as somebody who may be building a brand or wanting to help people share motivation, share something they're passionate about. That doesn't mean you have to do it because you want to make money, but maybe you love sharing with people um, pictures from your travels or videos from your travels, things you find in certain places. Maybe you like to share your garden or your dogs or your vehicles or whatever, just because it's fun for you. So if that's your expectation and that's your purpose behind why you utilize social, any of the social networks, then that should be it. That, that's the focus, right? It's not the other things. And so that's what you use it for is to connect with people in that fashion and then share what you're wanting. And what you don't realize is, is when you share stuff like that, it does offer a benefit to other people. So it's actually, if you're doing it in a positive fashion, like please keep your negative bullshit off of social media. Like it is not benefiting or impacting anyone. It's adding to the problem in most cases. But like if you're able to use it as something that's a positive and a productive thing in your world, then like hell yeah, it's a tool. So at the end of the day, it's a tool, right? So when you start to look at it as a tool, your perspective and your your feelings towards that completely change. And I've done this from the very beginning, right? And there's been a few times, don't get me wrong, in the middle of my business world since the beginning of social where I've had moments where I'm like, oh my God, this is so annoying or I don't like this. And it's like in those moments, it was during my biggest growth periods where I felt really uncomfortable more than anything, you know? And or some of the time frames when like we've had the most unrest in America or some of those times where I've been like, oh, my God, social media. Uh." And it's like, no, you get to control. Remember, you get to control what you see. You get to control how you use it and what you look at it as. And I look at it as a tool. And I hope that you will, too, if you haven't already, I hope that you will moving forward. And these are just some things that I'm going to offer you um, because I have built my entire business based off of sharing on social media. Yeah, I know, shocker, right? So long term, guys, like I've been doing this for seven years full time. I left my quote unquote corporate job, you know, over seven years ago and started running an online based business. And for the first five years, four to five years, I didn't even have any customers locally in St. Louis or Missouri, they, you know, a lot of my clients I'd never even met, still some of them to this day I worked with for a long time and I've never met them in real life because that's not how my business was built. And I was able to impact them and help their lives and all that stuff. But it was created based off of the connections that I created on social media. And so when I say that it's a tool that if you choose to look at it as something and you change your thoughts and your attitude about it as something that allows you to connect with people and have the ability to share your passion make a difference, help raise the vibration, like all those things, then it really truly is a gift um, if you choose to look at it that way. So what I'm going to share with you is I have, let's see, six tips, six social media branding tips. And then we'll just go down the rabbit hole on each of them because this is something that I've obviously not only done um, for myself and built my presence to where it is, but also have done for clients and for various businesses and done, you know, consultations for other people and also been able to help them build online businesses or grow their brick and mortar business um, as a result of approaching social media differently than a lot of the, what you learn in college. Um, Marketing in general, I should say, is different than what you learn in college. When you've actually done it, um, you've actually lived it with several different kinds of companies, your own included, what you learned in college, like sure there's some pieces to that that work, but what actually works is very different. Take everything here with a grain of salt if you'd want to. Take it take it down as, as serious as you'd like, um, but I definitely would consider after all of the years that I've been doing this to be on that more expert level of, of brand building in a way that's different than a lot of um, textbooks may tell you. So some of this stuff might be repetitive, but it might not be. So we're going to just dive on in. So number one, I think you need to decide what's important to you. Whether you're just creating a profile to share what you're passionate about or share your life, 
connect with people or you're wanting to do it in a way that you're creating a brand or a business or promoting your existing business and like putting it, giving it an online presence, it's important, number one, that you decide what is important to you. What I mean by that is, what do you stand for? How do you want to be represented? How do you want to feel when you're doing the stuff that you're doing on social media? Because a lot of people buy the textbook definition of what I quote unquote should and should not be doing online. And then they morph who they are and how they speak and how they interact with what they think they should do on the internet. Um, In most cases, that's exhausting. The passion behind it doesn't exist. And it's really hard to keep up a persona. So I never suggest for people to do something like that. I always suggest for them to get really honest with themselves about what's important to them, about how they are, who they are, that kind of deal. This is also a place where if you have fears around showing up online, um, will usually show up and those are also important to kind of recognize um, to be able to help you navigate differently, right? So for example, I'll give myself as an example. For me, it's important that I am just the same online as I am in real life. And I have had the privilege of meeting a lot of people from all over the world that I only knew on social for a long time. I'd meet them at an event or something like that. And here's what I mean when I say you don't want to create a persona that you have to uphold because if you do then get on the phone or interact in a Zoom call or be live with a person in real life in front of you, then you have to put on a show for them. You have to be that person. Now, granted, as you create a personality or not a personality, but like a like an online presence for yourself, of course, like you got to be mindful of the influence that you have and you want to be mindful of, of the impact, I should say, that you have on other people. But part of that whole situation, part of the whole thought process behind that is to be able to do so in a really authentic fashion. And the reason I always ask people to get really thoughtful about this is because that's sustainable because that's who you are. You know, I cuss. This is not a surprise if you're listening to this podcast. (laughs) But that's how I talk. I grew up talking that way. Not my parents hate it, don't get me wrong. But then I was in body shops and in insurance companies and it's just part of the culture and it just comes out of me and it's a part of how how I talk. I don't even think about it. I can hold it back if I want to, but when I'm passionate in the moment and it comes out, it comes out. And so if I was to tone myself down in that fashion and then get on a private call with you as a client or you were to see me speak in person and you heard an F-bomb kind of come out of my mouth and that was appalling to you, that would be me misrepresenting who I am and giving you a false idea of who I am. Or that would mean I would have to constantly babysit every thought I have and every word that comes out of my mouth, which I don't want to do. So for me, that's of being in integrity for me, right? So that's what's important to me. So that's my number one. And I hope maybe that gives you some idea of where you can start to really get clear on what that is for you. Because when it becomes something that you believe and you live and you're integrated in, then showing up is the easy part. Like knowing it's the doing the things, the things that come out of you becomes way more easy um, in what you're posting and stuff like that. So number two is know your audience. And so with this, it's a little bit more technical because um, what happens is, especially as Instagram has become more popular, a lot of people are like, you need an Instagram account, you need an Instagram account, you need an Instagram account to every business owner that exists, right? And the truth of the matter is, is that you need an Instagram account if your ideal clients are on Instagram, okay? So what I've seen a lot of people do is they've had really a lot of success in building a business and sales specifically on Facebook. And then somebody somewhere told them that they needed to focus on Instagram. So they started focusing on Instagram, therefore leaving Facebook kind of not as an important factor and their sales go down. And it's because on Instagram, it's a different ball game. Every social media platform is different. Every rule, the rules are different. The way they work is different. The way the user uses the platform is different. What they're looking for is different. What their activity and behavior there is, is different. There's a demographic, and I'm not going to go into just for the sake of not 
talking your ear off forever and ever. Um, but there's a certain demographic that doesn't purchase off of Instagram. They just scroll, right? They see your stuff. They think it's cool. They want to buy from you. They literally will go to Facebook to buy from you. It's just, it literally statistically, this happens often. More often than not, the majority of my clients, both brick and mortar and online-based businesses, their clientele, if it comes from social media, it comes from Facebook. And I'm just saying, because again, most of the demographic, like the age ranges even fit in that category. Um, If you're only trying to get to certain types of ages or whatever, you can get really gritty on where your people are. That's what I'm getting at. You need to get really aware of where your people are. Who's your audience? Where are they? Who's online? Where are they at online? What are they doing on the internet? What do they give a shit about, basically? So you need to be aware of that. And what that comes sure, you can pull data and, and do that if your accounts are not on business mode or whatever um, they call it, it's different on each platform, then I would definitely change that because then you can look at the insights and you can kind of see who's looking at what and what they're doing, if they're clicking or not clicking and all of those things. And so then you can play with what you're going to do where, right? So like Instagram stories was like the hottest ticket for quite a long time. And then recently, a lot of people's views on their Instagram stories have plummeted, myself included, honestly. So at the same time, I'm going, okay, we're not going to continue to only put all of this energy and effort into Instagram stories if they're not getting attention, if it's not getting seen by It's not even getting seen by, it's like literally less than, it's like 5% of my, less than 5% of my audience is seeing my stories right now, which is like, oh God, okay, well here's social media, right? You got to kind of keep rolling with the punches and remember that it's a tool that you're not in control of. So you got to just roll with it if you're going to use it, but I believe it's worth it. Um, It keeps me on my toes personally, but, and I think it keeps everyone on their toes, which is important because I think that you should have to be present in what you're doing on social media in order for it to feel good, like you should have to be present. So anyway, know your people, where are they? Sometimes that just takes collecting data for a while, paying attention to what people respond to, what they don't respond to. I know what kind of photos work for me on Instagram and I know what kind of photos don't. I know that if I have a lag, I know I can post a certain thing and all of my stuff will go up. I know that if I post a bunch of photos that just have words on them, then my views go down. Like I know this about my audience and it's just how it works, right? So, but that comes from paying attention and really starting to recognize what people respond to when they don't, right? So know your audience, make that a priority to figure it out. And again, that kind of comes from and brings us into number three. It comes from consistently posting and showing up. So that means, I don't mean that I want you to feel overwhelmed. Oh my gosh, I have to post in four places every single day. I mean that you need to probably increase whatever you're doing at least a little bit um, and consistently do so. I don't ever want, I'm not a firm believer in being like, do it every day. Like, and if you're only doing it once a week and then I tell you to do it every day, the likelihood that you're going to feel freaked out by that and actually do it every day is pretty low. Um, So if you've been posting once a week, I suggest adding two more days, right? I suggest setting reminders for yourself. I suggest writing things in in advance. Um, So I'm going to talk about that for a quick second when it comes to consistency, because you can use things like planning apps to draw out what you're going to post when. Um, I do know that your reach is lower if you use a third party app to post your content. So even though it's an option to have, you know, I use an app called Preview. It is an option to have them auto post on my behalf. My reach is much lower when they do it versus me manually doing it. So if you were to schedule it on a post on an app like Preview, which I'll link it below, um, if you were to schedule it, then what happens is it gives you a notification that says it's time to post. And so you literally click and it copies it. You go to Instagram and you hit paste and tag whoever, which we'll talk about later, and then you, you send it through, right? So, but you want to actually manually be doing it um, versus having it auto post because they get less reach. Even in the schedule or on Facebook, I've noticed that's really definitely a thing too. Because again, 
The whole point of social media is to be social and to be present, which is why it's designed to have you actually be the one doing it versus having a robot do it. Um, so using a tool like that is helpful. I can input a few pictures um, and write some captions to go with them, have them banked for days that I don't feel like I have words coming out of me. A lot of the times I do just have words coming out of me and I just sit down in the morning and think about whatever I want to talk about and it just flows out of me and I post it. That's how I do consistency, right? But on the days that it doesn't happen, there's a bank of stuff scheduled to go out. Or when we're trying to be really um, intentional or specific about what we're wanting to achieve, which was something I was going to say, like you want to be aware through all the things I'm talking about, kind of what your objective is um, as to why you're even using these platforms, right? Like what's your objective? So same thing, like if you're just using this to connect with people and to share your passion, not to create a business or any of that stuff, the objective is exactly what I just said, to share what you're passionate about and connect with people. And so then when you feel yourself veering off of that and you're like, bitching and moaning and complaining about social media, you can bring yourself back to that objective and keep it to be a tool that is rewarding and is providing you what it is that you're looking for, right? Which is connection and a place to share your passion. So all of that stuff applies. So with consistency, the next thing, number four, is photos. So here's a trick. Here's a trick of the trade. The reason you see people post pictures of themselves all the time on social media, in a lot of cases, is not because they're narcissistic. It's because you get better reach when it's a selfie. I know this sounds crazy. I have clients who do not like selfies of themselves and fought me on this for a long time, and they would use only professional photos with every business post they made. It would only be professional photos. And it was because she didn't feel comfortable with selfies, right? She didn't feel comfortable with that. And that's fine. But then there was a time frame when she was like, Jamie, I'm feeling really annoyed, like no reach. I'm not getting any interaction on this. I'm not getting any of this. And I said, will you trust me on something? And she's like, yeah. I said, post that story that you wrote with a selfie and tell me what happens. And she's like, okay, fine. So she did. And she got a fuckload of interaction and people inquiring about purchasing and all of these things. And she came back to me and she was like, why did you know that would work? I don't understand. Like, this is crazy. My, all my professional photos are so beautiful. And I, I, they're so beautiful and this and that and the other thing. And I said, because it doesn't make you human. A selfie is a real pic. Like, literally, it's, of course, people use, you know, editing apps and shit. But, like, it still makes you a real person. And, again, at the end of the day, that's what social media is about. And the likely, what people buy your product, you guys, or they sign up for your thing, they're buying and signing up for you. The quicker you realize that, the more successful you shall be in your interweb interactions. So everything that I'm talking about with the photos, it definitely is a big thing. It definitely helps, especially on Facebook. Your posts will get more reach if you have a photo with it, typically. Um, obviously, you have to have a photo on Instagram. And um, test it out with your audience. But in most cases, in most of the businesses I've worked with, when you throw in a selfie now and then or something that's really real looking, not staged, not whatever, the increases up, 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 up of the interaction and also just the trust that you ha people have in you. Um, you know, in her instance, for example, she was trying to help women who were feeling insecure or unconfident in their ability as in their profession, in their ability to raise their prices, get higher client, get more clients, have a high, like elevated experience. They were feeling not con a lot of time. They're not confident and sure and consistent in those spaces. And I said, well, dude, when you're showing up, literally looking like a supermodel in every one of these photos, that's in, that's it's your, they're not connecting with you. Right. And that is not how you look every single day. They're beautiful images, but that's not what you look like all of the time. And so it's not an accurate and full representation of the different layers of who you are. And so if you follow me on social media, which you probably do if you found this podcast, you see the variety of things from me and the dogs to just me to professional photos to modeling photos to pictures of me working on my Jeep to me at the pool or traveling or having a bad day or whatever, right? Like 
there's a variation because that's what my brand is about. It's a lifestyle. It's who I am. Hi, here I am. You people hire me and give me money because of who I am and how I can help them in their lives. It's That's what I've built, though. That was the intention. That was the objective um, to what I was doing. There is a method to the madness. You know, there's nothing that irritates me more than when people run their mouths and say, oh, God, that girl on Instagram, like, pff, that's easy. Anybody can smile for pictures. And I'm like, dude, you have no idea the amount of work that goes into that. You have no idea. Like, she is a being a boss. You might not agree with how she's doing it, and that's fine. You don't have to. But there's a lot of work that goes into those things. So anyways, photos. The other thing is, is if you can increase the quality of your photos, that helps. And so what that means is you just put a little bit more effort into it. Get yourself a tripod. Use the timer. Um, everybody thinks I have a photographer following me around, which sometimes I do, which is lovely. But my old photographer slash assistant had, you know, graduated from college and went on with her life to do her passion job. And so she's not able to be with me all the time. I use a tripod all the time. I, care. I have one in my purse. Like, my girlfriends laugh at me when they want to take a good picture. I just bust the tripod out. You know, it's just way easier. But anyway, tripod, selfie mode, use the use the timer. It's a game changer. And then there are apps that can help you if you want. You can use Facetune. You can use, um, oh boy, what's the other one? There's another one. I'll have to look it up. And um, I'll post it below just a couple options for you guys. But yeah, so... You can use those to tweak it and lighten it up if you want to, whatever. Um, there's like an auto on Facetune. There's just like an auto um, filter or not filter, but like an auto option. It just basically kind of just like vamps the picture up. It doesn't make you look fake. It doesn't change your face or anything, but it just brightens it a little bit most of the time. So you can do things like that. Um, again, just the intentionality behind it. But I think it's offering and, and approaching it as something that's serious because it is. Um, number five, links, tags, hashtags, and mentions. So a lot of people don't understand these or there's a lot of mixed information right about it. And what I do know is number one rule of thumb always, and a lot of people get this wrong is, well, there's two things on Facebook. If you put on your Facebook personal profile, if you post a link to something, inside of the actual post, you will get less reach. Facebook does not enjoy posts that direct people off of their platform. End of story. So if you are to post, here's all my stuff about my program or my book, and then you put the link in the actual post, you will get way less traction on that post because of it. So what you should do is post that with a photo and put the link in the comment, the first comment underneath. That will get you the most traction on your Facebook personal page. On a business profile on Facebook, you can put the link in the post. It's all good. They don't mind it, because it's different. It's a different, um, different uh, algorithm, I guess you could say, in the way that it functions. Also, if you pop a little bit, like a couple dollars on a boosting a post that has a link in it, you get way more traction. Um, so that's a big deal. The other thing is putting links inside of Instagram posts makes no sense. And the reason is, is because unless it's like so easy for someone to like remember and retype it somewhere else, because there is absolutely no way to click a link on that post or copy and paste anything from the Instagram post once you've posted it. So you usually you'll see people say link in bio. That's why. So if you don't have something like Linktree or somewhere that you can have multiple links showing in your Instagram profile, I highly suggest it. I personally created my 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 own page on my um, website. It's just jamietherber.com slash Insta. And then I can go in and add buttons and remove buttons for the things I'm promoting or talking about or offering anytime I want to. And it's just hosted on my own page, which is easier for me than I have to pay for it and blah, blah, blah. You don't have to do that, but it's it's an option. So that's the deal with links. Um, hashtags and tags and mentions. So on Facebook, hashtags hit or miss. Sometimes, like if you're doing an event or something like that, it could be if you have a huge group of people who are doing something 
with you, like that can help people find the posts, but they, it's not nearly a search tool like most are anymore on Facebook. On Instagram, it definitely is. Hashtags are the way that you show up in people's discovery page where you find new followers and new people see your content that aren't already your followers. That's what hashtags are for. You do want to make sure your hashtags are relevant to your post, not just some random shit because Instagram knows it and they will give like push you down the list if you're posting a bunch of random things. You want to make sure that it's and you don't want people coming to your page to see your stuff that's not interested in your stuff. So if you're posting about cars and you put flowers as your hashtag, then you've got women or men who are looking for flowers seeing your car photo and like that doesn't match. You see what I'm saying? And so that just doesn't make sense anyways. You want to make sure that they match and they make sense. You want to do at least um, six to eight, they say. You can do up to 30. Um, So that's how hashtags work. You can research hashtags. You can just Google it. What are the top trending hashtags for car companies or fitness companies or coaches or whatever? You can do it once a week, once a month, and they'll show you what are the top trending hashtags. Um, How to tag people in images on Instagram is tagging companies gets your increases your reach, but you don't want to tag companies that aren't relevant to your picture or aren't in your photo. So for example, if I was to take a picture of myself right now, I'm sitting at my desk with my blue, beautiful microphone and my Dell badass computer screen and my um, closet factory built-in cool wall that I have in my office. If I was to take a picture of myself right now and post it on Instagram, I would tag closet factory, blue microphones, Dell computers, and my hair extension company because all of those things are shown in my photos. All of those things are business tools. All of those things are part of my brand. You see what I'm saying? So then what it does in that case is it expands who sees your stuff, right? So, but don't go tagging fucking 75 people that aren't in your picture because number one, that's spammy. People don't like that shit and it will get you flagged. So tag relevant things. And then mentions, which which is where you put like the at symbol in somebody's name. You can do that on Facebook, business profiles, personal profiles, or Instagram. And then that does to offer you showing up more in front of their audience. Because that's the whole point, right? Which leads me to number six, which is to get social. That's the whole point, right? It's interacting. It's commenting on or replying to people's comments. It's going to other people's pages that you like what they're saying and commenting something relevant to what they're doing. So what happens there if you're trying to grow your followers which are, or you're trying to, let's put it this, let's talk about two things. If you're trying to grow your followers, what you want to do is go to pages that you like that are in alignment with your objective and what's important to you and read their post and comment things that are relevant to their post. Don't just say, hey, cool job. Or like, don't ever try to poach people off there either and try to say, oh, come look at my shit. Like, don't do that. Yucky. Don't be yucky. All of the things I'm telling you come from a place of sincerity. And as a result, they work. If they're coming from a place of yuck feeling and you don't even feel good about doing it, then it's not going to work. So Basically, what you want to do is be social, give a fuck, like tune in. And this could be 10 minutes a day that you do this, literally 10 minutes a day. You go and you look at other people's profiles that, again, are in alignment with your objective or what's important to you, reading what they wrote and commenting something that matters. What happens is if they have, if they're in alignment with you, most likely they have similar audiences than you and people will see your comment and people will and be intrigued by your comment, like it, reply to it, come follow your page. Like that's how Instagram specifically really, really works. Facebook does the same thing. Um, Instagram does it a lot better, to honestly. Um, then the other thing is if somebody takes the time to comment on your picture or your post or your video on any Facebook, we haven't really talked about YouTube very much because it's not my specialty by any means. I do know enough about it, but that wasn't really my focus today. But If you know, if somebody takes the time to like comment on your shit, like reply to it. If it's a nasty comment, just delete that shit. That's what I do. I just delete it. It ain't worth it. It ain't worth my time. No, no, no. Just delete. Delete. Save yourself the headache and the anxiety to just delete that shit. If somebody takes the time, reply to them. And don't get me wrong. On my Instagram, for example, that takes a really long time. 
but me and my team, my team helps me sometimes with it, but we make a point to acknowledge every person who takes the time to comment on my stuff. Now, if somebody comments something a little bit longer than, you know, just like an emoji or, oh, that's awesome, they say something bigger and they have more of a response, I always make sure to give as much of care in my reply as they did in their comment. Because again, the whole point of social media and the whole point of building a brand is creating trust and relationships. That's where people really fuck up, honestly, in online marketing is that there's this like old school thought processes. I'm going to post every day. I'm going to do all this stuff. And then I'm going to make all this money and all these people are going to buy my shit. And it's like, no, dude, they buy your shit because you, you establish a level of trust with them and a relationship with them. That's why it works. So that's why like, you know, I've had the pleasure of working with a few women in particular who work for um, or are members of some of these multi-level marketing companies, right? And I get hit up by market level, multi-level marketing people all day fucking every day, which is fun for me. Just kidding. It's not fun for me. But they're like, man, look, you already show up all the time. Like, you'd be perfect to sell this product for me. And I'm like, yeah, but that product doesn't fit my brand. I don't want to use that product, but I understand that it would be easier for you because I have this huge audience if I try to sell your product because you would get money off my money, you know, but they're not, that's how they approach it versus the people who are like, Hey, Jamie, I saw that you had this thing going on and we have this product that I think you would really like. What do you, would you be interested in trying it? Or could I send you a piece or could I send you a sample? Whatever. Hell yeah, of course. Like, or somebody's like, Hey, I get it if you're not interested. What do you think about this? Blah, blah, blah. Creating a relationship, giving, taking the time, like that's how you build success in those businesses. In any business, but specifically in those businesses, that's not what you're taught. They just tell you to like cold message like a thousand people a week or whatever. That's a, that's a gross exaggeration of the number, but it's a lot, right? And granted, obviously it works for some people. But a lot of the people that I see at work with the most already had an established social media presence and an established audience that trusted them. So when they've already built 50,000 people who listen to what they have to say and then they decide, oh, I'm going to sell Arbon or I'm going to sell, you know, it works or whatever any of them are anymore. The people are like, oh, I trust her. She's already helped me in all these ways and I see her lifestyle changing and blah, 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 blah. so they're more likely to buy and like then it just builds and builds and from there and those women are great and they it's pretty incredible what they're able to accomplish but when I've worked with some of the women who are wanting to create that the struggle is hitting this like how many people you're going to message quota and instead of just being a human and saying hey I care about you and this is a really cool thing I Would you be interested in trying it? Or, hey, guys, I had a friend of mine who was experiencing extreme fatigue. I offered her some samples of this product. She tried it. It, She liked it. This is how it works. If this is something you're interested in, let me know. Like, that's the marketing. Just like what I do with my business is I share my own experiences, the experiences that I have working with my clients and helping them grow, and learn and get more money and do better things. I experience, I share my fears and passions and learning experiences as a story, not as a, hey, you should have this because that doesn't work for me. It doesn't feel good to me. It doesn't work for most people. Trust me, you don't want to create a brand and an audience out of fear mongering them. We have enough of that happening. Um, and it's just not always sustainable because then again, you have to hold up that persona, right? So anyway, storytelling, I didn't have that as a number seven. I didn't have a number seven. I had a one through six, but we're going to just finish this off with storytelling. Some of the most successful commercials that have ever existed um, tell a story, 100% tell a story. So think back to when you were young and you watched more TV probably, like actual TV where there were commercials. Like Coca-Cola commercials, um, Budweiser commercials, Pepsi commercials, Nike commercials. They told a story. Like they made your feelings go, oh, wow. They 
brought nostalgia or memory or family or sports or struggle and strength or whatever. They brought those things into your space. They told you a story about something they were a part of. And as a result, you remember it. I still remember a Campbell's Soup commercial for when I was a little kid about a dad who wasn't supposed to be home for the holidays ended up showing up. Like, I remember these things because they tell you a story and that's what impacts people. So I don't want you to be manipulative with the stories that you tell by any means, but I want you to recognize that if you're willing to tell a story with a purpose behind it, the impact is greater. The impact that you have on people, the ability to change their perspective, make them feel better, give them a tool that they can use, give them hope for a second, make them feel seen for a moment, not alone for a moment. That's really my number one focus is I just want people to not feel alone. They're not an, you're not an island, right? You're not the only one who feels this way. And so I tell my stories over and over and over again because I want people to realize that they're not the only one and they can have this or create this, that it is possible, that it doesn't have to be this other way, that blah, 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 right? Like, that's my deal. And so I do that through storytelling. People are like, oh my God, Jamie, I'm not a good storyteller. I don't know how to write well. I don't know how to speak well. You're so good at it. Do me a favor, friends. Go onto my blog. Look all the way back. 10 years ago and read those. I was not that great of a storyteller back in the day. Go back and listen to some of my early videos. We're talking like 2010, 2011. Not that great on camera, friends. Words didn't flow like this. It takes practice. It also takes passion, right? Which again, go back to what's important to you. What's your objective? And if your objective is to share your passion, connect with people, sell whatever it is you're selling, whatever your, your, your objective might be, you utilize that desire as fuel to show up and do all these things that I just mentioned to you, right? And like, honestly, if you took the stuff I just told you in this podcast and you didn't listen to a fucking thing anybody else said but you about how you should market your company and you just did these things for the next six months, you would see a drastic change. End of story. I, I'm going to also note that I am a true and firm believer in the fact that your energy and mood that goes in, the energy, mood, and intention that goes into the words that you write and put on the internet is felt by everyone else. Have you ever read something that somebody posted and you like, ugh, like you felt like shit about it or you felt icky or you felt anger or you felt... It wasn't even your anger. It's because you can feel that shit. People underestimate the power of that. So when I've posted really controversial things in the past, people are like, oh my God, don't you just get so many haters and everybody wants to hate you? And I'm like, I mean, sure, there are still some, but nine times out of 10, if I'm coming from a place of certainty and compassion with what's coming out of me, not judgment, not like fear, not anger, I don't get that response. Like people can feel that in you. So they can feel that in your intention behind when you're posting and what you're saying. So keep that in mind. Um, it's super helpful too for you to make this into an experience that isn't torture feeling. <laughs> it can be something fun that you enjoy. Again, back to the beginning with changing your thoughts and attitude about social media in general and understanding that it is a beautiful tool that you can use to your advantage and to help other people and to you know, lighten the load of other people and things like that. So that was a lot of information, friends. I hope that that was beneficial to you and helpful. If you have more questions about anything that I put on here, I kind of gave you the Cliff Notes version of a lot of this. Um, let me know. Send me an email. My email is linked below. And I will answer any questions that you have like or some a lot of times I have training videos on different things and I'll just pop you over the video if you ask a question um so with that being said if this is something that you ever wanted to have a conversation with me about your specific business or brand that is something that I offer it's called a marketing session 
uh, marketing strategy session, if you go onto my website, jamiethaber.com, and you go to work with me, there's a little drop down. It says get on my schedule. If you click that, it'll show you the option for a marketing consultation or a marketing strategy meeting. And you can click that, pay, get on my schedule and schedule right then. And we spend the whole time talking about whatever you want about your bar, your brand. Typically beforehand, I'll get your handle and your websites and all that stuff and take a look at everything. So I'm familiarized with it before we get on the phone. And then we're able to really hone in and help you out. So that is a really beautiful and cool tool to have. And then you have, we rec- I record the call and I you know, give you notes and you have that forever to utilize. And this is also something we talk about regularly inside of my coaching group, Operation Do, if that's ever something that you were interested in. There's hundreds of videos about marketing and branding and social media and telling your story and all that stuff in there too. Link for that is also below. As always, thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to let me into your ears or into your car or into your office, wherever you're listening. I appreciate you so, so, so much. You have no idea. And as always, if you liked this podcast, please be sure wherever you're listening to subscribe, to like it if there's the option to like it, to share it with somebody that you believe would benefit from it as well. And until next time, friends, go out into the world, have a good day, do good things, and I will talk to you later. Bye.